Did you get that? <laughs> okay. We're now recording this just so you all know. If you have to step out for any reason, this recording will be on YouTube. And also, if you weren't able to attend our first session, which was on marketing your student leadership experience, that recording is available to you all as well. We can share that out if you're interested in seeing what our first session was about. So for today, we are talking about reconnecting with leadership, right? What are some of the disconnects that's come up for you since you attended the Leadership Institute? maybe roadblocks that came up that you don't know how to handle, or if you're just feeling kind of disconnected from the curriculum, it's been a few months, maybe even a few years for some of you. And so we want to talk about some different ways that we can work alongside our visions, knowing that things have changed since we initially came up with them and understanding how we can modify that to better suit whatever our goals and our visions are now. So to give you a little bit of context, my name is Carolyn Carmody, not Leadership, as it says on my Zoom listing. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a past participant of the Leadership Institute myself. I was a participant during my sophomore year of undergrad at the College of New Jersey in New Jersey. And since then, I have gone on to be an on-site coordinator four times, twice back at my institution, my junior and senior year, and two other times at national sessions, once in Boston in 2023, and again this past summer in Chicago. So all of those experiences have really proven my love for Leadership. And to keep that love going, I also currently have an internship with Leadership's um, Program Quality and Management Director, which is Juan, who's on the screen with us. And we work together to give more resources for campuses and work with our partners to provide them all the different tools that they need to make the Institute and our other programs successful on their campus. One of the things I'm also doing in my internship is these virtual conversation series to work with other past participants like myself, bring us together and keep that love and that passion for leadership going. So I hope to do that all with you today as well. And on the side, when I'm not working with leadership, I am also a graduate student at the University of Connecticut studying higher ed and student affairs. So that's a little bit about me. I would love to hear a little bit about you all to see who's here. If you're comfortable, share your name, pronouns, and where you're joining us from in the chat so we can all be in community. And if you didn't show your Halloween costume and you'd like to, feel free to throw that in there as well. Hi, Emerson. From Lehigh, not too far from me in New Jersey. One of my best friends goes to Lafayette, though, so I know that that's a controversial rival for you all, but welcome. Hi, Lily. Great. So excited to have you all here with us today. Feel free to keep introducing yourself, send up those last chat messages, and I would like to give you all a little bit of an agenda of what we're going to talk about today. So we're going to think back on our time as participants. What were we passionate about in the moment? What were some of the moments at leadership that stood out to us, that shaped our experiences? Then we're going to talk about what's kind of happened since we left the Institute. What were the roadblocks that have come up? How are we going to realign ourselves with our values to work around these roadblocks? Um, and then one thing I wanted to share with you all is we're going to do a lot of self-reflection today. So take a minute, get your notes app up, open up a Google Doc or a Word document if you want to do old-fashioned paper and pencil fine by me, but I just want to give you all a heads up that we are going to do some internal self-reflection. So I want you to have some means to do that for yourself before we move forward. Hopefully everybody's ready. I'm going to keep going. So what I want to start with is reminding you all about leadership, leadership's definition of leadership. Does anyone want to come off mute and read the definition for our little group today? I guess I'll do it. So leadership is a practice of creating a more just, caring, and thriving world through living uniquely with integrity. Thank you. I appreciate you coming off of mute to read that. And we didn't even have to wait through like a whole minute of awkward silence first. So I appreciate your bravery. So I know I don't need to re-explain this definition to all of you. We all went through the Institute, but I want to remind this, remind you of this and keep it at the forefront of your mind as we're going through this kind of reconnection moment today so that you can think about, you know, how am I co-creating with others? How am I looking for a just, caring, and thriving world? And how can I center integrity at the bulk of all of this work that we're going to do? So with this in mind, I would like to tell you all a little bit, oops, a little bit about my vision from when I initially intended or attended the institution what I initially intended. There we go. So my vision was related to hearing accessibility and accommodations, particularly with auditory like programming and stuff. And so I was motivated by this just on my own personal interests. 
But when I look back on this now, it's a little bit narrow in scope. I mean, obviously, I was I had big ambitions that everyone was going to be able to hear and have full accommodations. So I don't mean narrow in that regard, but I was limiting myself to only focusing on inclusive practices for people with X identities rather than being more kind of generic about just keeping inclusive practices at the forefront. And so now when I look at this and I think about like the work that I'm doing at UConn, rather than just focusing on like specific hearing accommodations, I'm more passionate about having inclusive accommodations at the forefront rather than having someone have to self-advocate for what they need, if that makes sense. Like I am more motivated by just keeping this work regardless of if I know someone can be impacted by it, rather than my initial vision, I was thinking like, let me help people who are already facing these challenges. Neither one is bad. They're both have good intentions and good motivation. But when I think about what's come up for me in the past few years, I realized that I was limiting myself to a specific entity. And because of the specific limitations that I placed on myself, I strayed from my vision. I was intimidated by it. I didn't know how to connect with people who were doing this kind of work because I had such a narrow focus. And instead, what I did, which is related to my vision work, was that inclusive practice that I'm talking about in all regards of my orientation programming work, which is where I work at UConn. So I want to show you all this graphic that may help illustrate how you can think about your vision since then and how you can kind of reorient yourself to achieve that just caring and thriving world that we've been talking about at Leadership, but maybe not in the same way that you had initially intended. Now that you've gone months since the Institute and you've seen different things come up and different factors play out in your life. So if you look at this kind of uh, figure eight graphic, which we call the vision roadmap, you'll see a couple of different entities along the way. So if you start at that orange car, that's your unique point of view. That's who you are experiencing the world and all of the lived experiences that have shaped the way you show up for others. And as we're thinking about our visions, um, we had described them as challenging, compelling, service-oriented, expandable, vivid. Those were all the words we were using to initially define our visions. And those are still relevant. You can still think about those as you were coming up with different plans of what you see the world to be now. And as you go through, you'll also see those green highway signs, for lack of better words, which are your fuel. So you've got fuel for your vision. Those are your stretch goals, your manageable goals, the action plans that we may have worked on with our vision work. And you've also got fuel for yourself. So what are your values? What are you passionate about? How do you show up with integrity for others? Those things are all motivating how we are coming up with our visions and the work that we want to do. And then alongside that, you've got the blue cars that are riding right along with you. They're driving with you the whole way. Those are your driving forces. Those are your relationships and your collaboration with others. Who's in your corner? Who's supporting you? Who's going to hold you accountable when you do continue to stray from your vision? Because it's normal that different challenges, as you can see when you look ahead, challenges, slowdowns, being confined to certain scopes, those are all normal and natural parts of the vision process. But knowing who's going to be pushing alongside you and co-creating that just caring and thriving world with you, that will help you stay on track and stay on course in this driving metaphor that we've got going on here. Um, and just to make it clear, those roadblocks with the slowdowns, challenges, and confines, it's not one time as it may look like on here. The figure eight graphic is intended to show that you are always going through this process. It's ongoing. You're always finding new goals or new values, different passions show up for you. And you're always going to be facing continuous challenges as you're going through this course. But knowing that these other blue cars are driving with you and going through this figure eight process, it's what can help motivate you to keep going and keep modifying your vision depending on where you're at in your life. So with all of this in mind, and I hope this makes sense, does anybody have any questions about this vision roadmap? Okay, I will give you an opportunity to do a self check-in. Do you remember your vision? Do you remember the values that you identified on that paper t-shirt? And think about what has changed in your life since you participated in the Institute. Like what factors, whether they be positive or negative, have affected your ability to make change? Maybe something really good happened to you. You joined an organization that was super aligned with your values and your motivations, and you were able to really propel your vision forward. Or maybe you got out of the Institute and you realize, wow, this is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be, or different things in life have popped up and slowed me down from what I was going to originally do. And I promise I'll stop talking in a minute so you can really focus, because I hate when people are talking when I'm trying to reflect. But what I just want to say before we really get into it is that this is not designed to be like 
a guilt or shaming based activity. It is totally fine if you don't remember your vision, you don't remember your values, like that's very normal. Um, but I just want you to be aware of if there are gaps in your understanding or your reflection there. But it is totally fine if you write in your paper, I don't remember my vision at all. We will talk about how you can change and alter your vision and keep going forward. So I'll give you a few minutes to do that now. All right, we're gonna go ahead and move on for now, but you can keep these questions in mind and continue to reflect on this as we're going through. So what I wanna make clear now is that it is totally okay if you aren't pursuing the same headline that you wrote down for the tomorrow's headlines activity. What's really important is getting back to that definition of leadership that we talked about is that whatever you want to do now is in the pursuit of a more just, caring, and thriving world. So if you decide, like me, maybe that hearing accommodations accessibility vision that I had, it's still important to me. It's still something that I'm going to strive to do in, in my work and always keep hearing accommodations and accessibility at the forefront of my mind. But it doesn't mean that my whole life is going to be dedicated to this cause. My whole life now is instead dedicated to other causes. Well, I don't know about my whole life. We could talk about boundaries a whole separate time. But other aspects of my life are now dedicated to areas I feel passionate about, which is like leadership development for students, which is what motivates me to do these sessions with you all, where we can talk about leadership and we can talk about changing our minds and working towards what we believe is to be a just, caring, and thriving world. That's what I'm really passionate about now. And if I could go back to leadership and rewrite my headline, it would be that all students have access to these leadership curriculum programs. And so that's what I want you to kind of think about as we're reconnecting with leadership. Remove any of that guilt of, oh, I didn't do what I said I was going to do and change it to be like, well, I have all these tools now where I can do anything that I want to do. So as my passions change, I know how to make these stretch and manageable goals. And I know how to think of a broad vision that encompasses what I'm passionate about now. And I think that one of the ways we can do this, and it was made clear on the vision roadmap too, was that your values are fuel. And I personally never remember what I put on my value sheet. I try and live by them right in my core, but I'm not like staring at a t-shirt every day thinking about the five values that I identified. And I think that's just realistic for all of us, right? Life happens, other roadblocks come up. We can't always live in the same way that we intended to, but we can do the work to realign ourselves with our values. And so in the spirit of reconnecting with leadership, I would love if we could all re-engage in the value alignment activity. So as you remember, we presented this list to you of sample values, and we had participants select like three, four, or five values that stand out to you, and we wrote those on our paper t-shirts. Now, of course, if I could have mailed paper t-shirts to you all for this activity, I would have, but we won't be able to do that today. So if you want to just jot down the list, that's totally fine. If you want to put together a little graphic of your t-shirt that you can use now and save as a you know, image on your desktop so that you have it with you. I think those are great ways to kind of really engage you with your values and hold them close to you so that you don't have those same faults where you kind of just forget about them as, as things happen. This will hold you accountable, like those driving forces we talked about on the roadmap. This can be a way to hold yourself accountable to what you said you wanted to do. So I'll give you a minute, look these over, pick out three, four, five, and we are going to share these in the chat in a moment. So just be mindful that I will ask you to share those. And I just want to share with you all too, someone in the chat had asked if we are only limited to the values listed. You are not at all. If you have a value that speaks to you that is not on this list, please feel free to share it. This is not by any means a comprehensive list of all the values you can hold. So definitely feel free to add your own to the list. All right, if you've come up with your list, I invite you to share that in the chat with everyone. This will be kind of our virtual way of doing that gallery walk activity that we did at the Institute. I will also share with you all, this is the t-shirt that I crafted. My four core values that I chose were creativity, loyalty, authenticity, and community. And I would love to see what you all are sharing in the chat. Look at that, already some connections. Emerson and I both value authenticity. I'm seeing that Lily and Emerson both have compassion. This is really a wonderful list. If I had the same amazing inspirational music to play in the background that we have at the Institute, I would love to. I will spare you all from me doing a karaoke rendition of that instrumental music. So consider yourselves grateful for that. Loving everyone's sharing. I invite you to continue sharing your values as well. 
And I want to reiterate that if you are someone who felt disconnected from your values or maybe can't remember what you even identified them as, as the first place, save this list in a way that's meaningful for you, in a way that will remind you what you set out to do, how you're going to keep these values at the forefront of your work. And I truly believe that this will help you as fuel when you face those roadblocks, when challenges are showing up, when you feel limited in your scope, remind yourself what was important to you. And I believe that that will help you moving forward. It really helps ground me personally when I'm thinking about tough decisions that I need to make. You know, I can reflect on these values now and think about, okay, am I acting authentic to myself? Am I doing what's in the best interest of my community? Am I staying loyal to my community? And am I thinking about any sort of problem solving solutions in a creative way? And I don't want to get stuck doing what's been done just because it's been done before. So those are the kind of the ways that I frame the values when I'm making difficult decisions or I'm working against roadblocks. That's how it comes up for me. And I encourage you all, if you want to take um, that self-reflection paper that you've done and think about ways you can center your values in response to those roadblocks, that would be great. And so this is kind of our last reflection prompts that I'm going to have you do for today. And I want you to think big picture. With this in mind, this leadership reconnection moment that we've had, what's one thing you can do this week that moves you towards a more just, caring, and thriving world? Forget about these grandiose visions that we have that are not super achievable right away. What is one thing you can do that will just help you get on the right track for a more just, caring, thriving world? One way you can extend kindness. In addition, thinking broad, who can help you co-create when you have big ideas? I think one of the reasons that we see participants stray away with their vision is because, like I said, I didn't know who to turn to when I wanted to implement this work. So think about just one person or several people that can be mentors, that can be co-creators with you, so that you know you can count on them when you have these big ideas. And finally, if you identified roadblocks in your reflection, what's one way you can make progress towards working around that roadblock? You might not be able to tear it down in a year, but what are some ways you can make progress towards it. Oh, I'm sorry. Are we answering this aloud or are we just typing it in chat? You can just keep it on your own self-reflection paper. Although if you'd like to share aloud, I'd love to hear it. But if it's okay. personal and you don't want to, just keep it for your own self-reflection. This is mostly for you. You don't have to perform an answer for any of us. Okay, I was just wondering. I mean, I can share aloud if you want sure. me to. Um, so I guess what's one thing that you could do this week that moves you towards a more just caring and thriving world. I guess like for me, I would just say being the best I can be, but as far as like taking action and like actually pursuing it out, um, I just recently got hired on as a 911 dispatcher. So I feel like that would be part of like making a move, playing an important mm -hmm. role in today's society, I would say. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, that's a definitely a great step. It's very tangible, which I think can be valuable for us. Sometimes it's hard to grasp big picture ideas. And so a career move like that, working as a 911 dispatcher, is definitely an easy way to see yourself making moves towards a more just caring and thriving world. Thank you for sharing, Darian. Oh, you're welcome. Does anybody else want to share? Totally don't have to, but I'd love to open up the space if people are thinking about ideas and they want to bounce things around and, and share out. Uh, I wasn't looking to share, but I just wanted to say thank you. It was good seeing you. I had to run because I have another meeting exactly at 1230. But, <laughs> no worries. Uh, thanks so much for joining. I hope this was valuable for you. Yeah, thanks for running it. And like I said, good to see you and Juan again. You too. Thanks, Lily. All right. So with that in mind, everybody... I hope this was helpful and a valuable session. If you enjoyed today's session, we do have one more coming up at the end of this semester. Uh, this session is going to be recharging with leadership. It's going to be a more healing-centered workshop. We'll have a guest speaker, which will be really exciting um, for another person to connect with in the leadership sphere. But I know for me, towards the mid-November and the end of the semester, it can be very difficult to kind of keep pushing through and not face those challenges of burnout. So this will be a session that's designed to recharge you to build some resilience and help motivate you through the last push of the semester. So I definitely recommend checking that out. That's going to be on Tuesday, November 19th at 4.30 EST. Um, we'll post about it on Instagram and on our LinkedIn. So you can get the link to that the same way you got these ones. And like I said earlier, if you missed our marketing session and you're interested in checking that out, you can watch our previous recordings of that 
and all of our sessions from last semester on Leadership's YouTube channel. So definitely check it out if you are enjoying this. Thank you all so much for participating today. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. I'll be sticking around for a few more minutes. And I hope to see you all in November for our final session. Thanks, everybody.